Hi everyone. I am Dana Smith from Love Oswaye, and I'm here to talk about the May new releases. What a month May has been. We have change in government, change in Prime Minister, and on the very same day, Love Oswaye's possible campaign came to a close 21st of May. We wanted to extend a massive, massive, massive thank you to everyone who donated to that campaign. We raised $5,660, which meant we could meet our very first campaign goal, um, fundraising goal, and we'll be able to put together a swanky new website, um, which hopefully will make it so much easier to find the information you need about levels, YA titles. So whether you're looking for your next great read, whether you're an educator looking to find a book that meets syllabus requirements, whether you are a publisher, whether you're a writer, there'll be writing tips on there. Um, we're hoping there'll be something for everyone on there and that it will just be much easier to use. So keep your eye out. But thank you, thank you, thank you, really. We are a team of volunteers and um, we're just so excited and pleased that um, we found so many people willing to support the, the, work, the work that we do. So thank you. Other things that have been happening. Uh, we had Brisbane Writers Festival, love, love your day there, which uh, I got to along with our President Kate, we were over there on at Brisbane Square Library, uh, soaking up all of the fantastic love your vibes um, and listen to an amazing array of authors. And Sydney Writers Festival also um, heard some fantastic news from there. Um, one of our other volunteers was sending us little quotes um, from so many authors that were speaking there. It sounded like a fantastic event. Big month. Fantastic. Uh, so th that's been happening May. New Prime Minister, end of campaign, writers festivals, and Heartstopper came out on Netflix. Don't know if you have watched a few times like me. If you are looking for a Love YA, Love Oz YA uh, reader likes, my suggestions would be Anything But Fine by Tobias Madden or Henry Hamlet's Heart by Rhiannon Wilde. Two books that I absolutely love, giving you all of the LGBTIQA plus rom-com loveliness that you could desire. So hit those up if you are having withdrawals and can't wait for season two and three of Heartstopper to come out. New releases. Oh my goodness, it's been a big month for new releases. And uh, we have been on the uh, interview, in, on the interwebs interviewing authors as well. I thought I'd start with Sarah Ayub's newest because I interviewed her. It was a great chat. The Cold of Romance is her newest book. It's a new adult, I guess, YA that you would call it. It's set in Percy University. So the central character, Nat, she is Lebanese-Australian. She's um, grown up here in a very conservative household with her dad and her grandmother after her mother um, leaves, which is little, and um, has grown up with no intentions whatsoever to get married. She really thinks that there's other things that women can be doing. Um, she plans to start a business, a baking business with her best friend, Janet, um, and fund trips around the world. That's what she wants to do. And then Janet goes on holiday to Lebanon and come back, comes back engaged, which throws a spanner in the works. And then Nat has to, goes off to Lebanon for five weeks to support Janet at the wedding and so um, Sarah talked a lot about wanting to explore this concept of belonging um, in migrant intersectional women and exploring that idea of what it means to belong when you return to the motherland the motherland you've never been to you've grown up here what does that mean for your sense of identity and the other thing that I really loved about it was just that exploration of female friendship of what it's like when you're best female friends start getting into committed relationships and what's, what that does to French female friendship. So I really enjoyed that one. Also on the new adult front were, is Libby Lawrence is Good at Pretending by Jodie McAllister. And uh, it, it follows 19-year-old Libby Lawrence, who is um, involved in the camp, university campus production of Much Ado About Nothing. Um, she loses her virginity to the two charming director and um, he then runs off with the group's money. So things are not going well 
and they still have to put on this performance. Now, I saw Jodie speak about this book at uh, Brisbane Writers Festival, and she actually started writing it when she was 19. So, um, or 20. So there's a lot of herself back then, she says, and it's perfect for all of the theatre geeks. Um, so I think it should be a fantastic romp. I haven't started reading it yet, but I've got it here. Um, the other author that I interviewed this month was Meg Gatlin Venice for When Only One. It follows on and is not a sequel, but it's set in the same world as her, her 2018 novel, I Had Such Friends. Um, it is an entirely change of pace from those two um, because it basically opens with the school shooting and then it jumps back to a year before the sh school shooting and it follows um, the central character who is a surfer and um, his friendship groups. He um, starts getting visited by um, an old friend, Emily, who... Um, doesn't have a great home life. There's themes around domestic violence in this one, um, parental suicide. Uh, so there's a lot of big issues in this book. It, uh, I've got to say, it made me cry. So it, it's definitely one that would be a fantastic syllabus item for discussing and unpacking some of these difficult topics. And Meg herself is a teacher. Um, so she really wanted to write about things that made, she made, makes her angry. So school shootings make her incredibly angry and um, wanted to really inspire teens to look at what are the things that they can do there might be small things that they can do when someone is going through a tough time um, and that's there's a lot of people in this book that do a lot of good things um, as well as some really difficult topics so when only one definitely recommend not an easy read but a really important one also we had Bianca she interviewed Meg Caddy WA author um, and Bianca lives over in WA and Meg has brought out a sequel to her earlier novel um, it's called Slipping the Noose that one's historical fiction and it is about um, basically female pirate I think is my sense from reading the blurb which sounds fantastic so um, the blurb opens with Anne Bonny is chained up in the hold of a prison ship nursing nine-month-old Molly. Again Massive change of pace, different lives. Uh, sounds like a fantastic gripping book if you're into your historical fiction and piracy and, you know, what a fantastic read. We've also got Jared Thomas. He is uh, um, a First Nations YA author in Adelaide and his book is called My Spare Heart. Um, and Phoebe is... Um, she, her parents have just split up. Her non-Indigenous mum um, has, and her Aboriginal father have just split up. She's moved into this small, sleepy small town, Wollonga, um, with her dad and his new girlfriend. She sounds like she doesn't entirely get on with. And it's miles away from her friends. Um, she is struggling to fit in. And then on top of that, she's worrying about her mom's drinking and her mom is starting to be a bit unreliable and this is affecting Phoebe and her grades and that sort of stuff. So um, also sounds like a great one. I haven't had a chance to read to that, that one, but I'll definitely be picking that one up um, because I really love Jared Thomas's earlier books as well. Clips of Summer, I think, is just an awesome, again, new adult um, set just after high school finishes, um, which, yeah, awesome read. So My Spare Heart, Keep your eye out for that one. Um, what else came out? Oh, The Greatest Thing. This is a graphic novel. Now, I really loved Jessica Walton's Star in Their Eyes, which I think came out last year. I want to say last year, maybe the beginning of this year. My grasp of time has been affected by COVID, I must admit. But um, this is another graphic novel, and it is set in grade 10. So younger, slightly younger. And it's about Winifred, who her two very best friends have just moved to a private school and she's going back to school at the start of year 10 without them. Lots of fears around having no friends, all of that sort of stuff that we can all relate to. And she meets Oscar in April in her art class, but she's got a secret and she's not sure if they're going to want to 
still be her friend once they find out what, what it is. So I can't wait to pick that one up. I really love graphic novels. I feel like they're a perfect blend between watching TV and reading a book. Um, and there's some amazing artwork in this one. Um, I really love the, the style of the artwork. It's really clean and crisp and simple, but um, gorgeous. So I'm looking forward to picking that one up. And of course, the other big one thing that happened this month is, well, you know, that Noni just happened to finish the Prison Healer series, produced, put out um, Blood Trader, did a launch event with Jessica Townsend from Nevermore fame. Um, so <laughs> extremely jealous that I couldn't be there and can't wait to pick that one up because that is a fantastic series. Even I, who gets a little bit scared, who's not also is so great with the fantasy. I absolutely loved Prison Healer and um, I cannot wait to finish the series. Bianca, who is our resident fantasy lover, well, we've got lots of fantasy lovers in the, the Love Oswaye volunteer pool, but she um, was super excited to read that in the interview with Lynette Noni. So I cannot wait. She was raving about it. So there you have it. That's our, a snapshot of my new releases. I hope that um, you find your next great read from um, that. And I hope that it's helped to pique your interest. There have been some fantastic crackers this month. Um, I know I've enjoyed all of the books that I've read. So, and I've, and I've got my t TBR pile just keeps on growing as they always do. But um, yeah, happy reading and I'll see you next month, hopefully. Bye.